Um, our mission within the Church of God of Prophecy National Men's Ministry Departments has been the same for many years, and that is to develop better men, husbands, fathers, leaders, and lovers. That's been our mission, and it still continues to be our mission. I want to share with you um, just a few simple tips, really, some really very, very simple tips um, that... Um, that I believe will be of significant help to us going forward. Uh, and TIP stands for Techniques, Ideas, Principles and Strategies for Empowering Young Men. And we do believe, but myself, Brother Earl, Brother Rob, um, and Brother Earl, Brother Rob and myself, that maybe just one tip in this that would, may help a pastor, may help um, one of our young men, may help a parent, a guardian that oversees our young men. And these are very, very useful tips. Um, quick tips, as I say, I will send them out. So I will go through it as quickly as I can. There is a powerful um, West African custom that when families come together, they ask this question. So how are your children? And the answer to that will reveal your values and your priorities. And if I were to come to every local church, uh, starting with where I am in Wembley and ask this question, so how are the children? How are the young men? The answer to that question will show the values and the priorities that I have placed and that the leaders have placed up on our young people. And it's a very, very powerful West African custom. So how are the children? And that maybe is a question that I will be using going forward um, to pastors. So how are the young men in your local church? A very important point I'd like to make and point out, if you're going to work with young men, and if you're going to be a guardian of young men and be effective and be empowering, it, you must um, have a passion for young men. If you don't have a passion for young men, when challenges come your way, you will quit and you will throw the towel in. And so you must have a passion if you're going to work with them. It's not just a, um, a particular title or a job, but what really is your passion for young men? I love this point by John C. Maxwell. He says, a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. And um, if we are going to empower young men, we really got to know the way that we are to go. The scripture talks about the men of Issachar that they were men of understanding. They understood the times and they know exactly what to do. So if we're going to lead young men, we need to know the way and we need to go the way and show the way. One thing I want to say to those um, of us who are looking after young men, whether leaders or parents or young men yourself, um, if you need help, ask for it. There are extended family, friends, church members, support groups out there that you can draw upon for support throughout your life. So ask for help. It takes a village to raise a child. So I strongly recommend that we ask for help. Another thought that I'd like to take is that, just going back a bit here, uh, is that it takes, it takes a man to teach a boy to be a man. We want to say congratulations and thanks to all the women who are doing an exceptionally uh, tremendous work with a lot of our young boys. Um, but we are, we are making it quite clear that the role that men play must not be underestimated. And uh, that as men, we ought to know it takes a man to teach a boy to be a man. And there are lots of examples I could use here, but because of time, I won't necessarily go into that. One thing to bear in mind is, and Bishop makes a point very, very powerful today, so powerful. Every young man has potential. Potential is possibility, is capable of becoming, is the ability to be um, something and to be something great. And Bishop talks about the fact that uh, there's gold inside every one of our young men, no matter how they're behaving. And I love the point about the fact that, you know, it's gold is covered over sometimes with garbage and we have to work through and work hard and diligently and not quit and not give in uh, with our young men. We've got to let them grow and go. We've got to let them grow and go. This is the image that I have seen of myself 
from I was 22. And that is the, e the image of an eagle. I have held that uh, very dearly. It's, on, it's, it's been on my desktop for probably over 30 years. And I've never let go of this image of myself being an eagle. Young men have potential. Every one of them, no matter whether they're in prison tonight or wherever they, they are, they have potential. Uh, Brother Earl shared a point with me that I'll never forget. It's something that I'm trying to do within the local church that I am in right now. And it is the point, the mission of our local church now should be to get every young man doing something. Because one thing I've learned, if they're not engaged, they will become disengaged, they become frustrated and they will leave. And so we are recommending and, um, to our pastors and to our men's le leaders is to get them engaged, get them involved in something, get them doing something, whatever it is, create it, invent it, and get them involved. Because if they're not involved, it could be that they get frustrated and leave. When we talk about empowering, and Brother Michael Simpson put a very powerful um, point in the chat room about uh, you know empowering and so on. And these are the eight areas that we have identified that we should work on um, with our young men to get them engaged. Um, all eight are very important, um, and I'll read them out. Health and fitness, personal development, community involvement, um, career, um, talents and giftings, and I'll come back on that, family, financial freedom, social life, and spiritual life. These are the eight areas that I've found. I've oftentimes referred to this as the wheel of life. Uh, that means to say there needs to be balance around these eight areas, and these eight areas are very powerful. I want to say there's a very powerful verse of scripture in Proverbs 29, 18, that says, where there is no vision, the people perish. If we are going to be men's leaders, if we're going to be grandparents of these young men, if we're going to be parents of these young men and be successful, we must set goals. We must have goals with deadlines, and we have learned about SMART goals. Uh, most of us uh, know about these goals, but I strongly recommend that if you want to be successful and adhering to Proverbs 29, 18, then we're going to have to set goals that are specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Uh, and it's very, very important that we set goals. So if I come to your local church as a men's leader and I ask you, what is your goal? And you can't tell me within 20 seconds uh, and you're hesitating, it means that you have set yourself up or failure. I want to share with you something that every company uses. Bishop Tedroy will tell you this. He's using it with us as national uh, executives and so on. Um, and it's uh, th this four plan. I, I have never failed. Has never failed me, should I say? Uh, and it is the aim, plan, action review. And I'm saying to every uh, men's leader, to pastors. Design an aim plan action review for every young man in your church. If you've only got, if you've got 20 or 10 or five, what is your action plan for them? The aim is to do with what I've just spoken about in terms of the SMART goals. There must be an aim, there must be a goal. And what I'm saying basically is this four step plan is truly powerful. Every successful company in the world, Brother Earl will tell you this, every successful company in the world use this. Every successful individual in the world uses. It's simple. It's very effective. It's never failed me. Aim, plan, action, review. I want to give you my simple um, strategy for developing any plan. It is one of the most effective I've ever, ever come across. And we call it the 5W, um, H, and 4 R's. It's very powerful. Uh, and um, when you're putting together a plan, if you, no matter what you're doing in the world, no matter if it's a church or a big corporation, this is what they follow. Um, I have simplified it. It's simplified. It's, you can find things like this on the internet and so on. Uh, and what we are saying basically is here is a very simple um, plan that you can follow. We all know the, 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 the phrase, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail, Bishop Ted Roy, uh, and so on. So if you want to save yourself stress, time, energy, and money, why, why not use this very simple um, planning structure? As I said, I will be sending this out to every pastor, to every uh, men's leader, and to anybody else who wants it. It will be on the um, national website as well for download. If there's any explanation needed, there's myself, there's Brother Earl, there's Brother Rob, 
and we'll be glad to assist you and help you. I'm recommending to every pastor throughout the church is to set aside a, a, a budget for young men every year, no matter how much it is, even if it's 50 pounds or 100 pounds, we have to put our money where our mouth is. And I like, I love the point that I think it was Samuel Taylor that says, you know, Bishop Bernard has a budget. And this is really interesting because not every church has a budget. I'd love to see what Bishop Tedrow is doing now. We have set aside a budget for, for our national youth department. This is not something that we did before, but now we've got it, it's in place. And I'm recommending that we set aside a budget for young men every year. Bishop Tedra, when I came into, national, into the um, youth department, I, I was given an, a, a budget that I had to raise. I had to raise funds. <laughs> it's different now. What we are saying is that we need to, yes, we need to continue raising funds, but I'm saying to our pastors, to consider the, um, the possibility of doing that. One thing that I'm strongly recommending that we do to our young men is to listen to them listen to them. I love this quote by Mayor Angela, where she said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. And young men are people too. There was a phrase that we had that children are people too. Young men are people too. And we need to listen to them. And I'm strongly recommending that we do so. We need to also identify the gifts, the talents, the abilities of each young man and we need to create opportunities for them to excel in them, to use them. Uh, Bishop talked about, I think this conference has not been by accident or by fluke. And the point that Bishop has made, to me, I set the tone for the next year. There is gold. And I think that's the word I want to use throughout the year. There is gold in every one of our young men. We've got to learn how to pull that out, how to extract that. They have gifts, they've got talents, and they've got ability. I'm strongly recommending also that we develop their attitudes, their skills and their knowledge because knowledge empowers, skills empowers, attitude, the right attitude empowers our young men. And I'm strongly recommending that we uh, constantly develop ASK, attitude, skills and knowledge. Now, some have added an H to it where they call it H, H -A -S -K, I think, or something to that word, which is about habit. Um, so I'm strongly recommend attitude, skills, and knowledge. Every job on the planet are based around attitude, skills, and knowledge. The more we develop our attitude, skills, and knowledge, the more powerful we become. This is one of Brother Earl's very, very strong point, uh, uh, is that young people spell love time, spending time with them. When you spend time with them, you're indicating that you care about them, you're indicating that they're important. I have two grandchildren that were here this week. I had to purposely, purposefully set aside time that I spend with them to say, well, I love you and I, you're important. Just giving them the laptop or the iPad and sending them away <laughs> is not good enough. We must deliberately set aside time for them each week or uh, however long that we feel is necessary. I'm strongly recommending and, uh, you know, one of the things that we ought to bear in mind is that um, there's ideas, creativity, um, planning, success, and all these things that we ought to be, be aware of. And, I, and one of the words I really want to emphasize here is the word creativity. And that's one of the things I say to people, be creative, be creative, be very creative in what you do and how you do it. This was one of, um, I think it was Brother um, um, Jimmy from um, House of Bread, one of his very strong point is that we must never stop encouraging and encouraging and encouraging because encouragement is a constant, it's an ongoing thing. What we do consistently over a long period of time will have great impact, positive or negative. Just like these awards that we've done today, we are hoping that it will encourage those 10 and encourage others as well. Encouragement goes a long way. Bishop said, I was, I remember as a young person, sir, I was, I was called in front of the church and given and given three shirts. You know those shirts you buy in the in the market for 10 pounds, the ones you 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 wash it once and you throw away. But it wasn't about the shirt. It was about the fact that they called me and they, they encouraged me. I must tell you, I work, I work like a dream going forward, just that in little encouragement. And if we as senior ministers 
um, thrive in it. What about our young men? Encourage them, encourage them in front of the church, encourage them privately, encourage them nationally, encourage them regionally. That is very, very important. I cannot emphasize how important words are that we speak to them. Encourage and push them to become great by speaking kind and positive words to them constantly. That Proverbs 28, 19 is so true when it says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. And so the words that we speak to them in church, out of church, is extremely important. I'm strongly recommending that families create the environment at home so that they can grow, so that they can excel, and so that they can become great. Because we do know that they have gold inside of them. That environment is so important. It really is phenomenally important that we create that environment in the home for them to grow. And also in the church and wherever they are. The next thought I want to share with us is how we ought to lead by example. Even daily or weekly Bible studies is so significant. Young men copy and learn from what they see. There is that phrase that says monkey what monkeys see, monkey do. And we're not calling families or anybody monkeys, but just using the phrase to say that we are to lead by example. They follow, they, they see what we do. And I've seen, I'm not going to call any name, I've seen some of our families in the church and I've seen how some of your children have excelled because I know what you're doing. And you talk about some of the things that you do at home uh, and how you create that positive environment and how you lead by examples. We are strongly recommending to fathers. Fathers must not fall out with their children when they fall out with the mother. We need to be present, whether we are in the home or out of the home. Father, fatherlessness is an epidemic. It's killing our community. It's destroying society on a massive scale. I cannot begin to tell you the statistics. Brother Earl has shared some with us, uh, Brother Rob and myself, the statistics are devastating. And we are recommending strongly that fathers be there. If you've got 10 children, be there for all 10 of them. Uh, don't just um, throw them away. And I could tell you some horrific stories um, that has gone on. We're talking about building relationship with young men, building relationship um, with your sons, with your grandsons. It's easy to actually just get so busy and so caught up in what's happening and the work that we're doing, the church work that we're doing, that we never ever build a relationship. And that's what God wants with us, is to build relationship with us. A question somebody asked and somebody asked, I think in one of my meetings, um, would you invite someone to this church? Would you invite a young man to this church? And sometimes the answer that um, we surprisingly, Bishop, is sometimes people say, no, I wouldn't invite them to this church. And that is a very sad indictment. It means, uh, Brother Earl, that there are things we got to put in place, things that we have to improve on. Um, if we are not excited about the church we go to, we would not invite anybody to the church we go to. And, and sometimes young people tell me and they say, no, I, I, I don't think I would. I'd, I'd be embarrassed because of the way the preaching goes or the way that this go. So that's something that we have to look at. We, we may have heard of the book, Why Men Hate Church. <laughs> And so there are 10 reasons given, and I've added one, making it 11, as to why men hate church and don't go to work church. And these are things, Brother Earl makes the point on one of our show, these are things that we must compete with and plan for. Um, I hear them saying, I do, I, 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 I do not have the time. I'm too busy. It doesn't, church does nothing for me. It's too boring. Services, services are far too long. And that's a big cry, Bishop Ted. The message is too long. <laughs> it, it, church is irrelevant. I don't like the pastor. It's for wimps, too many hypocrites. They ask for money too often. And this is, this is an interesting one. Uh, I, don't, I do not wish to talk about it. And uh, one people often say it's for women, it's too feminine. Yeah, you know, people don't like holding hands or hugging. These are some of the things that we have to be aware of and ask ourselves, how do we deal with some of these? You may not agree with all these points, but these are some of the things that young men are actually talking about. Bishop Ray makes this point very, very well. 
do we really understand what young men are going through? Do we really understand what they're faced with? I'm 61. I'm not a youth anymore. And uh, do I really understand? So we ought to be aware of all the challenges that young men are faced with at home, at church, and in society as a general. And the big conversation today spoke about the fact that there are some pressures and peer pressures of today that I wasn't faced with during my day, post-Cold Wars, knife and gun crime. I, I, have, I have never seen a gun. I've never handled a gun. Uh, I, I, one person said to me, a young man said to me, if he doesn't put on his gun holster, listen to this carefully, if he doesn't put on his gun holster, he doesn't, he feels naked. He feels naked. And uh, this is what was told to me. Some young men will never come to church. Bishop Ray shared this point with us. We must bring the church to them. Uh, we're going to have to do, we're going to have to leave the four walls if we want to find some of our young men. We, they're not going to walk into our church. Maybe at a funeral, they may do so. Maybe at a funeral, uh, they may um, turn up. But if we want to win some of our young men, we're going to have to bring the church to them. I think it was Peter Drecker that made uh, a similar point to this, is that culture <laughs> will eat plans and visions for breakfast every day. The, what is the culture of the home? What is the culture of our churches for young men? Can they really um, relate to it? Can they excel within this? And so we have to be aware of the culture of our home and the church because culture uh, will overrule our plans and visions um, all the time. Something that's talked about uh, a lot, and we must must uh, adhere to this, and this was brought up as well in the big conversation, who are we training? Who are we developing? Who are we, um, you know, who are the Joshua's to the Moses, that type of thing, succession planning. J.C. Maxwell, John Maxwell makes it clear, so the leader is, leaders last in value is measured by succession. So we need to be aware of um, this, you know, um, who am I training? Who am I deliver, de de developing that will take the baton later? A another point was raised today is that we need to be transparent. Our Bishop rightly said, you know, none of us have been perfect along the way and young people want to hear our success and failures. They, you know, so that they can relate to us. They cannot relate to us if all they're hearing is our successes and not our failures. So when we're talking, we need to share, share those. Another thing that's talked about, and we will be working on this throughout the year with you, uh, especially our men's leaders, is mentoring. Um, what should it look like? Um, young men need good mentors. My mentor was Bishop, Bishop um, T.F. Foreman. And um, I must say, Bishop Tedra, I miss him like nothing. You know, I miss him so much. He was my mentor. The other day I was looking for him to, for a phone call to phone him. And then I remembered he died. And, and so um, you, you'd be amazed that even at 60, I still need a mentor. <laughs> so, so, so I'm saying that our young men need mentoring. This is something that I think is really important as well is that we need to create and maintain young men's group to inspire and motivate and for greater involvement. I wanna say congratulations to Brother Earl for at the church as Gloucester. Um, for over 20 odd years, they've been keeping that men's group going and it's just such an inspiration to hear that. And we are rec men, young men need to talk to other men and to, to hear from other men. And I think this is really important and I'm recommending that we create and maintain a young men's group in our local church and uh, where we can help. Just a few more slides that I'd like to uh, share with you. And um, basically um, this particular point is, is so important. Do you have young men on your agenda? We have lots of agenda items in our church and in our churches, but are young men on the agenda? Because if they're not on the agenda, we won't talk about them. Um, we have a lot of um, things that we are talking about in terms of administration, 
and we must deal with those. But do we have young men on our agenda? And I'm strongly recommending that we put them on our agenda. And just three more slides I want to share with you. I think this has been talked about before, uh, and, and I'm really strongly, 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 strongly recommending. And I think this has been coming down as well from our Bishop National Overseer, that we appoint younger men into the ministry, that we train into lay ministry, that we, we have a beautiful system in the church. When we appoint someone for lay ministers work, we are not appointing them as a full licensed minister. They're there for training and for development. And what we're asking is for pastors to consider putting younger men into the ministry, training and development. It's great to hear about what Justin is doing as a youth leader at what, um, 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 I forget his name all of a sudden, is doing as well in, in, in the church of Bishop, Bishop Bernard there and, and what he's doing. And it's great to see that. And, and we do know that there are younger men out there, the potential is there, and we're asking that a consideration be given. What we also are um, suggesting as well is that um, a consideration be made at the local level for rewarding and celebrating the achievements of young men and uh, recognizing them from a local level. We will do what we can nationally, but we are asking that the consideration be done from a local level. Um, rewarding them, um, acknowledge them either privately or publicly. And, uh, you know, just, just giving that encouragement, you'll be amazed how, how much that will help. And just finally, some quotes which um, I've added to this. Um, um, Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And we talked about developing their attitude, skills, and knowledge. I mentioned before about, uh, well, everything rises and falls in leadership. And so if things are not happening in the local church from a young men's point of view, we have to start at the top and ask, is the leadership aware of this? And how effective is the leadership? A leader's lasting value, as mentioned before, is measured by success. Number four, a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. You cannot empower others if you are not empowered yourself. We need empowered men um, to empower our young men as well as women as well. It takes a man to teach a boy to be a man. Do not just teach young men from the pulpit. This is a point Bishop Ray has strongly made and I uh, do uh, love this brother dearly and uh, thank him for this point. Do not just teach young men from the pulpit. It's not gonna work that effectively all the time. And I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel.